Hi guys, this is Cobra Tom. And I'm Lily. And we're doing kind of a special one. This is the kind of our finale to a Navy month, and we're doing the Cobra Mori. This is a 1985 vehicle, and this is a vehicle that can be loaded up with figures. And uh, we'll be going over some of the features and some of the special things and as you can see, well, maybe you can't see, but now we've got our new gun on there. We had a broken one, and I had fixed it, so uh, everything is actually, good. Actually, I... Well, you're right. You got it out. You fixed it. I just clipped the little piece off so that I can get it opened up. Liar. No, I had to clip that little, I had to cut that little oh, piece. I, I know, but you said that you fixed it. Well, I put the new one on it. Okay, but you're right, you fixed it. Teamwork. Teamwork, that's right. Okay, so, just a quick little starty thing. This comes up, and there's little pods, and um, earlier, Dad had a figure, and he, <laughs> he had actually this one, so he took the figure and he put it down, right? But he let go of it and it dropped in and he couldn't get it out. So with me, I had to dig in there and grab it out. So good going, Dad. Yes, thank you. I'm, um, I, I do appreciate it because it was really... Uh... Difficult in there. Oh wait, no, I think it was. It might have been this figure that's actually in there. The figure that's actually in there on that side, yes. That's, this guy. Yep. Because Dad is a smart person. Yep. Alright. It landed on the carpet. This is the lamprey. It kind of looks like an underwater thing, but it's a boat, so it doesn't really sink. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't, it doesn't sink. Hopefully it doesn't sink, yeah. And here is his gun. With a really nice strap and a really nice ammo clip, I have had the trouble of I can't get it into his hand. It's too thick, and I can't even make him left-handed. It's too thick, and I'm not gonna break the guy's thumbs off. That's just then you can't even get it in because then it would just the the gun would just fall. Yeah. So, I'm going to keep them like that. But she's going to talk about the coloring and the, um, the articulation and stuff. And I'm going to be doing something real quick. So, the weird part about this guy is that he looks like he could be wearing, like, a um, diving suit. Like, he was going to... Like this guy. This is a diving suit. Yeah. Like, he was going to go underwater. Yep. And here's but, a... He, oh. I'm sorry. Here's an underwater mask you can even show but he is supposed to be floating yeah but see how it in the front here it's got the breathing mask and the thing for the harness that's kind of what this looks like to us so i don't know it's interesting oops oops okay so he also is kind of wearing a tealish and gray color which also goes with like the sea theme ocean theme i don't even know what i just said yeah um but as you can see the top of his head is a different shade of blue than everything else which i that noticed. is weird i just noticed yeah i didn't notice that before i noticed that a while ago but you see this is a dark blue and this is a dark blue this is a light blue but the rest is light blue this is dark blue, dark blue, and dark blue, but this is the only thing that's light blue. Yeah, the coloring is, that is unusual. I didn't notice that. There's like different shades of blue. <laughs> See, the hands are like a weird color, like a weird blue. This is a dark blue, this is just a blue, and this is a light blue. Yeah. Now, if you're wondering, what would you, what, <coughs> I never had this before. But for display, and I'm only thinking that I'm going to put the gun here when he is on there. But I don't know. that Maybe it doesn't look very nice. 
I'm trying to figure out where to put it while he is, well, he, I don't think he's a captain. He, I'm not sure. I don't quite understand the grading system when you only have a, he's an O3 and I don't know what rank O3 is. I know the O, it means officer, but I'm not sure what that means. Now, I want to show something really cool before I get to the lamprey file card. Look at that. It's even got a really nice... Let's not crush this dude. Oh, yeah. Let's not crush that dude. I'm going to go in there and show you. Look at that. That is a... Re oh. Are you trying to show the... What are you trying to I'm show? I'm trying to show the... Not the wheel. The, uh, the steering wheel. That. There. Yes. Right here. This is a really neat steering wheel. And it uh, does have a little articulation. It here. does. Yeah, it does wow, move. Wow, that is actually kind of hard to move. Yeah, but it does move. It does have some pretty cool articulation. So there you go. Kind of moves. It kind of moves. It. It does move. That's what it does. What it's kind of got to pretend to do. Here's the Cobra Hydrofoil Pilot file card. I don't actually have this. So I got a picture of it. Codename Lamprey. File name unknown. These, these are not individuals. They're just supposed to be generic soldiers. Just nameless, faceless people. And so uh, they don't put a specific name on it. Although a lot of Cobra has file name unknown anyway. Primary military specialty. Hydrofoil pilot. Secondary military specialty, Cobra Frogman and Eel. That's kind of a nice continuity for the figures and the storylines and stuff. It gives a world building army ranks and kind of gives a real life situation for Cobra. First place, various countries. Grade O3 or equivalent. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I know O is officer, but I'm not sure what the third rank is. Um, that's a that's probably lieutenant. I would think that might be O2. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, paragraph says lamprey. Lampreys are the elite of the Cobra Sea Army. To qualify for lamprey training, a candidate must be a Cobra Trooper in top physical condition who has completed his eel training. Eels are the Frogmen Underwater Demolition Specialists of the Cobra Legion and has been operational as an eel for more than a year. The training is highly selective and more than 50% of applicants wash out before completing the course. So I do like that that world building kind of makes it feel like this really might be how this army would progress, kind of like in the real world where armies, you have to be a certain rank and then you can go to the next thing and the next thing and so on and so on. So that, that I, I really like that. That's pretty cool. This is comic number 36. The Moray Hydrofoil makes its first comic book appearance in this issue. And I'm not sure really what what this issue is even really about. I've I haven't ever read this one. But I know that the Hydrofoil's first appearance is in this one. The Lampreys make their first comic book appearance. In issue number 40. This is one that I never had, so I don't know very much about these ones. I'm afraid I feel kind of bad because I can't give you very much information. All I know is that the lampreys make a very first appearance in this issue. So, um, we have a guy up here that I think really fits this boat um, because there is red on him 
and there's red on the boat. There's this perfect gray that matches this gray. Well, it's a little darker, but you know what I mean. And then there's yellow and yellow. How perfect could he be? Anyways, the turret or whatever it's called up here yep. spins almost to here, not all the way around. Others might spin around better, but ours is really tight. And while that's okay, I don't mind having a tight turret and having it do that. I would much rather have that than loose. Oh, it does go all the way around, although hers... It like, stops at some points. It stops at that point. It must oh, be just... It's, a... it's, it's backwards now. It's backwards now. Well, technically, you'd still be shooting something I'm backwards, maybe. Live with that. Okay. Yes. I'll move it. I, I know you're a little really, afraid. It's really, really, really tight. She is not wrong. That is actually really, really tight. But to hold him in there is much better. Right here, you can't see it because his actual foot's on it. But there is a nice foot peg, and I mean, I can, I can dump him upside down. I'm not going to do it because I got other stuff and. Um, you can kind of see it, yeah. just a little bit. Yep. Yeah, it'd be right here, right where his Yeah, you left. can kind of see that his heel's up just a little bit. Yep. So that's pretty cool, and I like that because now he's, he's in there. And this is the one time I actually, hold it up once and show, this is the one time I suggest putting the hands on there because they're actually small enough. It's unbelievable. Normally I'd say never put them on there. Except but, for people that really want to risk their toys. Yeah, and I usually do not want to, but these ones are thin enough that you can actually put your figure's hands on it. It's really cool. Here is the box for the Cobra Hydrofoil Moray. And as you can see here, if I can make this a little bigger, you can't see who are sitting there, but I think in the two seats where the missile rack is are probably eels. And here you have the lamprey sitting there driving, Destro in the turret. And Dreadnoughts doing the searchlight and firing the gun. And the back doing the depth charges is the Baroness. Now while I know that it's a toy. And those are the figures that came out in, you know, 84, 85, stuff like that. Um, I don't believe that the Dreadnoughts should be on. Even though they're based in a swamp. I really don't think they should be based in a hydrofoil commanded by Cobra soldiers. But, of course, this is just a toy, and this is just, you put who you want on there, and if these are the figures you had, well, then you put those on there. And that's totally up to you, but it's just my personal opinion that Dreadnoughts do not belong in a Cobra vehicle. And as you can see, if I can make it big enough, there was a free Sergeant Slaughter action figure on the box. And on the other side here, it shows ages five and up, some assembly acquired, no tools necessary. And next to the Hasbro logo there is a picture of the pilot. Now, just my eye, and I don't have a real box in front of me. This looks white and not gray, but you could maybe say that that's gray. It's tough to kind of tell with this picture. But um, I think that the lamprey here looks really cool and is just a really neat toy to go along with this boat. And I love that the toy and the box on the for the toy shows the really cool snake, cobra snake on there. Just makes it look really cool, I think. 
so here are the seats of the what is it called this is the uh hydrofoil moray that's a long name the moray okay they are oddly like a throne that um ariel's dad would sit on yeah it does kind of look something like that and inside there you can kind of see a little engine detail or not engine detail there oh, is like actually the stickers there that show like um, panels and keyboards and i wish it would focus things <laughs> there are also have a little bit too close it, try that nope okay there are also like like dad said there are um like engine or um control, control things that would work the boat yep and i think if you put it the camera here this is where the machine gun would go so it's probably got some ammunition in here too oh i think the ammunition if there would be ammunition yeah because gi joe sometimes had like lasers and stuff it would be on that Sure. It's really hot. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, it would be on that muzzle, and there might be bullets. That's just my guess, right there. Mm-hmm. If you can kind of see it, that it would hold like rows of bullets in there. And right here we have a compartment. We have actually two, and really. Does he stand up or sit down in there? Really weird seats. Yeah, I don't know. He's supposed to sit in there. It closes. It closes. So it does fit. Oh, you know what I just realized? Ready? It has a face. See, here's here's the oops. Here's the mouth. Oh yeah. Here's the ears. And here's the eyes. Interesting. Alright, so. Here's the nose. For those of you who do not know <laughs> this toy, it has a secret gimmick. Are you ready for the secret gimmick? Pull back, pull back. You don't even know about this probably. One, two, three. Four, five, six. six. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, mine holds really well. Don't pull oh, up on it too much. Watch, watch, watch. You can kind of see his foodsies. Yeah. And I did not put these two missiles in there because they don't hold in there. And when I literally had to take this all apart the other day because these missiles got stuck in here Aww. where the piece goes right here for pushing the leather up and down. The missile got stuck like this and I couldn't get it up or down because it got stuck in here. This glass piece right here got stuck in there. I had to take this all apart. So it's something to think about when you're... Oh, um, that has to do something with our hammerhead, um, right? We were... or No, it was the bug. We were messing around with it, and I just got it. And we... Uh, a figure just falls apart in it. Yeah. Like, there must have not have been a screw in it or something. And the figure is everywhere in there. We're rattling around. We're trying to yep. get the pieces out. <laughs> oh, it's a mess. And here is one of is something that is almost <laughs> always missing. It's the searchlight. And not even the searchlight. This is fairly big. It pigs in kind of nicely. It's the lens. This thing is clear and makes it very easy to lose. So we have ours, and I'm very happy about that. Hmm, we almost lost this earlier, too. <laughs> yeah. And I am going to go back to showing a figure that I had once shown already. But this is my Admiral Latimer. And he is going to be the leader of this boat. In charge, I, what, I, you can. There's a lever here that you can put his hand on. And you can put his hand on the gun peg here. But I, I decide not to. And now I gotta see. I will have to do that later. And here is something that I've had a lot of trouble with. Is keeping 
the missiles on the toy. This one is a one of these is a little better than the other. That one's staying on, but I believe it's got to be this side's missile. Is really nice. I think it's because the if you look really closely, I don't know if you can see that the plastic's a little bit worn out right there. Yeah. I think that's all. Go. So there's here's the back of the boat, and um, I was just looking at this for a little bit, and I realized that there is a big open space right here. So if someone were to like shoot at you and this goes straight towards the control panels, your boat is sinking. Yeah, it, it, there we go. Yeah, she's right. I mean, it's big and open, can be hit. Now we're gonna talk about, I love this boat. I love this toy. We're gonna talk about the tiny okay. drawback on this toy, but first, here is the engine and the engine cover. That's really cool. It's slotted, vented, very nice. It's actually very fancy. But as you can see, it's got foot pegs, lots of foot pegs on this thing. But look, I can't. Bear oh, now it's gonna work. No, I see. Oh no, it's still not. I can't they even. They are so badly, badly placed. I mean, if like. Not even a baby, well, babies. Baby okay. would be able to do it. Not even a six-year-old could do this. Yeah, you need really little hands, and I can't even do it. So, I don't know why they put the foot pegs so close together. Oh, I, okay, I got one. Yeah, you got two. That is a lucky. Oh, now I got them out because I... But no, I, I still don't have them. So, okay, so that's... Oh, well, I sort of have it. We'll have to pretend that I've got it in there. And he's controlling the gun. And the other little thing that I don't like about this is these tiny, tiny... I didn't even keep them with it. Tiny pegs for these guns. They slot in there nicely. But I'm afraid that with such thin, thin plastic, it's going to crack off in there. And this one is extremely loose, but that's okay. Loose is better than so tight that you can't ever get them out. Yeah. Besides, you could probably put this in the guy's hand and be just as meaningful than to put it in here and have the pegs break off. So I, I don't really like the foot pegs. I wish the engine, even though it's really cool and it's really neat to have, it really is unfortunate that it's right here because you can't even get the, well, I had a dandy of a time getting the foot on the peg. So as you can see, that's kind of a, a big problem. But one of the cool little things is you can put a guy here and pretend that he is dropping the depth charge. See? Whoa, this one's in there pretty good. I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know. And then you could pretend that this guy, well, okay, he, he's on there pretty tight. So we'll do that. And. Okay, the top ones really hate falling out. Yeah, like these are doing probably didn't even see that because they didn't fall out very well. They got these nice little slots and they're supposed to have the things open up. Not bad. No, it's, it's, it's not bad. It's just they're supposed to open up and slide out and well, that kind of failed me. But that's okay. Anyways. Anyways. This would not be a hydrofoil without its special thing. You pull on the tab. Actually, you got to push it forwards. And that lock comes out. And it's 
gliding on these fins here. Now, mine are really loose. I knew that before, and that's why this whole video with them being so loose, I don't want to put it. It's okay just to kind of give a quick demonstration. Looks like a seal. Sorry. But yeah. No, it, it does. And look how just, I mean, look how wobbly it is. So I knit, that's why this wasn't down the whole video because I was afraid the weight of it is just going to bust these. These are really loose. Well, this is our video. This has been fun. I really like this. I, re I really do like this toy. This toy um, is special. Lots of people's favorite vehicle, I think. Um, it's actually not too bad. It is cool. Um, if the plastic wasn't worn a little bit on, on some of my things, on my example here, like the missiles hanging on better and stuff like that, um, it'd be a lot cooler. And the missiles going into the bay would be a little nicer if this for wherever it's supposed to peg into, pegs into it better, but it doesn't. But I really just, I would recommend it if you can get one. I recommend. What's the price range on that? I bought this and this was $100, but it was complete. And I want to keep it complete. And I had to buy uh, this gun because it was, it came unfortunately broken. If you saw the unboxing, he gave me, he was really cool. He was really good. He gave me my money back. Not all of it, but enough to buy a new one. And he was really good about it. Didn't have any trouble with him. It was really cool. I got this from a friend on Facebook. I really do like this. I recommend it. If you can get it for a decent price, complete, I would do it. Because it's... I think $100 is for a complete toy like this. Yeah. Yeah. We bought the we bought the Vector Jet at JoeCon and that was eighty seven dollars. So a vintage old one hundred percent complete toy. I think that's a pretty good deal. So well, thank you for watching and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Ah! Our light is like a million degrees. Okay, bye. Bye.